All right, guys, so today we are doing Chapter 17, which is the classification of life. Uh, before we get started, let's think about what our learning goals should be for the day. I want you to know and be able to just define the six kingdoms of life. You should understand differences between and among our six kingdoms, and you should be able to use common traits to classify organisms at least into the six kingdoms, if not uh, further in into a phylum or a class. So, step one, we will talk about unicellular life. Um, so this is our broadest way to divide life, and this is actually called uh, a domain. So this is even above a kingdom. So within unicellular life, we have Archaea, and then we'll have Monera, and we'll also have Protista. Uh, but first, let's talk about Archaea, uh, or Archaea bacteria. Uh, Archaea bacteria are the most recent discovery as far as life forms go. Uh, and that's because they live in very extreme environments, environments that uh, for a very long time, scientists just thought that life wouldn't work there. Um, for starters, most of them are very deep in the ocean, and so there's no sunlight, which means that there would be no photosynthesis, uh, which we thought for the long time was kind of the starting point for getting any sort of organic energy. Uh, but it turns out there's another uh, chemical pathway that organisms can use, and it's called chemosynthesis. Um, another reason that we wouldn't necessarily look in these extreme environments are the incredible temperature differences. Uh, so think about very deep in the ocean. We're talking about temperatures that are very close to freezing. Um, and then as you get close to these thermal vents, these, these essentially cracks, uh, into the inner surface of the earth, uh, it'll get incredibly hot there. So think about moving from just about freezing to over 600 degrees Fahrenheit uh, within a matter of feet. Uh, that's the type of rapid temperature change that we're seeing here. Um, and you wouldn't think that things live there, but uh, it turns out there are things that love living there. Up next, we have our Monera. Uh, these are our most common bacteria. These are prokaryotes. Um, they are also heterotrophic, meaning that they rely on other types of organisms and ingesting or absorbing those other organisms uh, to get food. We do have some exceptions. Uh, cyanobacteria and perchlorons are both photosynthetic. Finally, within unicellular life, we have Kingdom Protista. Now, these are eukaryotes. They are still unicellular, though. So, everything that we've talked about up until now is unicellular, and everything after this is going to be multicellular. So, within multicellular life, we have three additional kingdoms. We have plants, animals, and fungus. And we'll get into these more in depth, but I just want you to see very, very basically how we would separate them. Uh, plants will have a cell wall, and they will be an autotroph. Animals will not have a cell wall, and they will be a heterotroph. And then finally, a fungus will have a cell wall, and it will be a heterotroph. So it comes down to how do you get energy and do you have a cell wall? So first up, we have a fungus, which will have a cell wall. Now the cell wall is made of chitin, not of cellulose, um, but it does still have a cell wall, which might make you think it is a plant. You know, If we think of, of probably the most famous fungus of mushrooms, um, it's easy to confuse those as plants, um, but they are not. They do not carry out photosynthesis. They are heterotrophs. They absorb um, nutrients from other living things. We have one exception, and that's yeast. Yeast is categorized as a fungus, except it is unicellular. Yeast is, a, is kind of interesting because even though it is unicellular, um, 
yeast colonies can act in such a way that it kind of seems like they're uh, working interdependently. Um, and it's also important to note that funguses are very, very important to ecosystems because they serve to decompose um, dead things and get those nutrients moving back into the abiotic part of any ecosystem. Up next, we have our plants. Plants have cell walls, and those cell walls are made out of cellulose. They are going to be autotrophs. They conduct photosynthesis, and because of that, they contain chloroplasts. Um, they will reproduce sexually by pollen and ovule. Now, here are some major phylums of the plant kingdom. So all of these are plants, but can we start to further differentiate? So we have our mosses, our ferns, and our evergreens. So bryophyta, phyllocinophyta, and coniferophyta. We will also have anthophyta, and anthophyta are flowering plants. And then we'll go even further down. We will look at um, the different classes where we have dicot. So obviously di is a um, Greek prefix meaning two. So dicot is a two seed leaf. And that'll be most of our nuts and most of our fruits. And then we also have monocot. Mono is a prefix meaning one. So it's a one seed leaf. And that's going to be most of our grasses and our grains. So think of things like rice and corn. Finally, we have kingdom animalia. Kingdom Animalia will have no cell walls and it will be heterotrophic. All are multicellular and it's the most uh, diverse in all of the six kingdoms, most likely because as when we were first starting to differentiate things, um, a lot of things got put into the animal kingdom because it obviously wasn't a plant. Um, Now, most of them will reproduce sexually through sperm and egg. And here are our major um, phyla within the animal kingdom. So we have porifera, which are sponges and, and uh, sessile aquatic creatures. Uh, we have chelicerata. We have mandibulata. So those are both anthropods. Um, and the difference between those two are going to be um, how their jaw works. Then we also have mollusca, uh, which are, again, mostly aquatic um, creatures with exoskeletons. Uh, then we have chordata, so things that have a spinal cord. Those would be like our bony fish, our amphibians, our reptiles, birds, and mammals. Um, and so obviously that's, that's where we exist as well. Um, so as a result of this, I hope that you can briefly discuss the six kingdoms and that if I tell you some characteristics of an organism, that you could tell me where it falls into those six kingdoms. So for example, if I tell you, oh, hey, this thing is unicellular, but it has organelles. Could you tell me where that fits in? If I tell you, hey, this thing is multicellular and it has a cell wall and it's a heterotroph, could you tell me where that fits in? Those are your goals for the day.